It's recording this time, good. This is like my fourth time making the same video. Cause every time I try to record it, something happens. And not to mention, not to mention the fact that I had just finished recording my video for today before this news was announced. And now that video is completely irrelevant. Do you know why? Because it was about Jimmy Butler complaining about his minutes. He was getting to the Minnesota Timberwolves, complaining about Tom Thibodeau playing him too much. Now I can't make that video and I've been recording this video forever. But in case you haven't heard the news by now, Jimmy Butler was just traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. And the first thing that came to my mind when I heard this news was, what on earth took you so long, Philly? What took so long for you guys to pull the trigger on this trade? See, we all know that the Philadelphia 76ers needed a player like Jimmy Butler. They tried to get LeBron this summer. They were trying to get Paul George this summer. They tried to get Kawhi Leonard this summer. They struck out on all those guys. But still, they needed that player who can not only create his own shot, which Jimmy Butler can do, but also make plays for other players, which Jimmy Butler can do. But not only that, they needed a guy that they could have defend the opposing team's best wing player. They needed a guy that can defend LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Guess what? Jimmy Butler can do all of that too. So for the Sixers to get Jimmy Butler, that's a huge freaking deal. By the way, Houston, not looking too good for you guys. Now you really wanted Jimmy Butler. You really needed Jimmy Butler. Yeah, it's really not looking too good for you guys. Now. And now that the Philadelphia 76ers had Jimmy Butler, a guy that can help ease some of the offensive load off Joel Embiid's back and that'll make them a better offensive team overall since their defense so far this year has been great. It's just their offense has been kind of sus because they're relying on Joel Embiid too much when you have Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz in the lineup, two guys that can't shoot. So this is a huge move and the rest of the league should be pretty scared. I'm not gonna lie, the rest of the league should be extremely scared, especially every other team in the Eastern Conference. Toronto, y'all should be on notice. Boston, y'all should be on notice. Milwaukee, y'all should be on notice. Washington, let me not ruin this video by talking about that trash. So there's no way you can say that this wasn't a great overall trade for the Philadelphia 76ers. As for the Minnesota Timberwolves, since there are two sides to every trade. If you look at this trade, as a straight up, we gave up an expiring contract in Jimmy Butler and in exchange got Robert Covington, a good three and D player when he can shoot. This year has been kind of off. We also got Dario Sarge, a good up and coming young stretch forward. They can also shoot once again, he's been kind of off this season. If you look at that and then you also say, yeah, we also got Justin Patton, the rookie who has promised. Then yes, you can say that this was a good exchange for an expiring contract and Jimmy Butler. But if you factor into account, they had to give up Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and Laurie Markkinen for Jimmy Butler, then the Wolves still took a massive L. And not to mention the fact that Minnesota is 4-9 on the year right now. And that was with Jimmy Butler. They were struggling to get wins with Jimmy Butler. We know the Wolves, when they didn't have Jimmy Butler last year for an extended period of time, they were trash. They couldn't beat anyone. Jimmy Butler had to come back from his injury early just to barely scrape that team into the playoffs. Now they're not going to have Jimmy Butler. They're replacing with Dario Saric and Robert Covington, and they're in the Western Conference. I'm sorry, but the Wolves are not about to win many games at all this year. And while we're on the topic, the Wolves have better fire Tom Thibodeau ASAP because not only is he the whole reason that this thing has been going downhill, but He's also about to destroy the career of Carl Anthony Towns if he keeps playing him 40 minutes every single night. Carl Anthony Towns will not last long playing this obscene amount of minutes every night. Once again, that alludes to the video that I was about to make where Jimmy Butler was saying the same thing about the Minnesota Timberwolves that Tom Thibodeau plays his players too much and then people wonder, dang, why are these players always injured? It's because they get 41, 42, 43, 44 minutes per game. So Tom Thibodeau needs to go and the Wolves... Just be as bad as you possibly can be this year because one good draft pick can change around your entire organization as long as you still get rid of Tom Thibodeau. But yeah, this trade overall just came out of nowhere and the Sixers now had Jimmy Butler. They're not gonna have any problems trying to re-sign him next summer. Jimmy Butler is going to love it in Philly. He's gonna love playing alongside Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. They might be young, but these are young guys who want to win. They're not trying to say, oh, we're developing. No, these are guys who have big dreams and they want to win. Joel Embiid's trying to win MVP this year. And now with Jimmy Butler on the team, that's an extreme possibility because the Sixers are about to win a heck of a lot of games. So don't be surprised if you see Joel Embiid right up there with like Giannis fighting for that MVP award. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the phrase, once Giannis adds this to his game, 
he'll be unstoppable. First thing that came to your mind was a three point shot. I know this because we've all been saying this for the past two, three, maybe even four years. That once Giannis adds a three point shot to his game, he'll be unstoppable. So we've all seen and heard that discussion for years now. However, one thing that we haven't heard when it comes to this discussion is someone in the Milwaukee Bucks management saying the exact same thing. Well, that changed yesterday. As Bucks general manager, John Horst warned the league yesterday that if, if and when Giannis develops his jump shot, it's a wrap. Every year comes back with something different, whether it's at some point this year or next year, you're going to see him with a three point shot. And I think the rest of the league is pretty scared about that. I would have hoped that the rest of the league would be scared of that. Matter of fact, I would have hoped that the rest of the league is already scared of Giannis Antetokounmpo because Giannis Antetokounmpo, even without a jump shot, the man's already unguardable. He can get anywhere that he wants on the court at any time. Do you know why? Because no one in the league is physically capable of guarding a seven foot tall, 245 pounds, seven foot three wingspan can jump out of the gym and is super agile freak of nature that Giannis Antetokounmpo is. That's why he's already unguardable and that's why the rest of the league should already fear him. Once he gets a three point shot, that'll be like Thanos grabbing the last infinity stone. That's just when it's over. But here's the thing, I don't wanna talk about Giannis adding a three point shot to his game. Why? Because that topic's already been beat to death. We all know he's gonna be unstoppable. There's nothing else to say. However, what I do want to talk about though is why Giannis doesn't have a three-point shot yet I mean a lot of people look at Giannis and say like yo this is Giannis's sixth year in the NBA why doesn't he have a three-point shot yet he's been in the league for six years and you're trying to tell me that he can't shoot like I said we've been saying for the past two three four years that all he needs is a consistent jumper and he'll be the truth. So why hasn't he added that jumper to his game yet? Here's the thing though. You guys know how long it's going to take for Giannis to get a jumper? Well, not anymore, but back when he first started, do you know how long it's going to take for him to get a jumper? And do you know why it's going to take him so long to get a jumper? Because the man has never had to shoot jumpers before. The players who can shoot in the NBA, they can shoot so well because they've been shooting their entire life. They've been practicing their jump shot ever since they first picked up a basketball. Giannis is in the same case. This man not only started playing basketball late, when he started playing basketball, he didn't start shooting. Why? Because he didn't need to. He was so physically gifted, and that's the reason he made it into the NBA of raw talent and special abilities alone. He didn't need a jump shot. He was barely good at a bunch of the fundamentals of basketball, such as dribbling, passing, rebounding. So now you have this raw freak of nature athlete, but you gotta develop every facet of his game he needed to perfect everything and that's why you've seen him getting progressively better and better and better and better every single year adding something new to his game because every year he learns how to do something better because he's perfecting the fundamentals of basketball when you perfect the fundamentals of basketball and add it to the freak of nature that he is you're going to get Giannis Antetokounmpo so expect him to learn all of that and on top of that learn how to shoot at the NBA level just over the offseason at the snap of a finger as if all he had to do was go out there and spend some of his see that's unrealistic and this all applies to Ben Simmons too he's in the same camp as Giannis Antetokounmpo since throughout his entire basketball career up until this point he was able to rely on his special abilities his physical tools and abilities his gift for the game to get him to where he's at he never needed to be able to shoot from outside three feet from the rim so it's gonna take time for Giannis it's gonna take a lot less time than Ben Simmons but both these guys are working on their jumper in an open gym you give them the ball they can knock down three after three after three but everyone knows it's a lot different to knock down those same shots in practice as it is in an actual game that's it for all the main topics from yesterday though so now let's just take a quick look at the games from last night going back to the wolves they lost to the kings yesterday despite jimmy butler playing those 41 minutes and despite carl anthony towns having himself a night with 39 points and 19 rebounds 121 to 110 willie collie stein with 25 points as the kings advanced to a now impressive 7-5 start in the year while the Wolves are a miserable 4-9. The Sixers were able to beat the Hornets in overtime yesterday, 133-132. to Joel Embiid with a monster game of 42 points and 18 rebounds, while Simmons also did his thing with 22 points and 13 assists. Also, he had a very clutch block in overtime. The Denver Nuggets fall to the Brooklyn Nets for their second loss in a row as Karis LeVert hit the floater with just under a second to go to give the Nets a 112-110 win. 
D'Angelo Russell, the high man for Brooklyn with 23, while on the other hand, Nikola Jokic had his monster game of 37 points and 20 rebounds spoiled. Gordon Hayward made his return to Utah last night, and it didn't go well for him or the Celtics as Joe Ingles lit up Boston for 27 points on their way to the 123 to 115 win. There was no Kyrie Irving for Boston in this game though. And the Wizards continue to disappoint us all, this time by losing to the Magic 117 to 108. Big Boot with 23 points and 4 true rebounds as the Wizards are now 2 and 9 on the year. And the Indiana Pacers snapped the Heat's little winning streak yesterday thanks to Victor Oladipo and his 22 points, 10 assists, and 4 steals. And lastly, the Pistons were able to get the easy win over Atlanta 124 to 109. Andre Drummond with 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 blocks. And that is going to bring us to today's player of the day where you guys have the opportunity to vote for who you think was the best player in the NBA last night by clicking the little eye icon in the top right hand corner of the video. Just remember though the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day and yesterday that player was Kyrie Irving with his 39 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists. That is going to do it for today's video though guys. Hope you all enjoyed and if you did go ahead and subscribe to the channel with post notifications turned on so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. Thank you once again for watching though. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs. So until tomorrow, I'm out of here. Peace.